Hello and good, uh, good evening. Today I am going to present a lecture on William Blake, especially referring to his Songs of Innocence and Experience and I will look at the imagery and symbolism. Among uh, the poems that are referred here, will uh, the main focus will be Tiger in case of experience and Lamb in case of innocence. The main essence of Blake's symbolism lies in his philosophy of fusion, of contraries, usually represents two antinomian aspects of human soul. In his famous work, The Marriage of Heaven and Hell, Blake unites two opposite sides of human soul. And in play three of the work, The Marriage of Heaven and Hell, he writes, to quote, Without contraries is no progression, attraction and repulsion, reason and energy, love and hate are necessary to human existence. From these contraries spring what the religious call good evil. Good is passive that obeys reason. Evil is active, springing from energy. Good is heaven, evil is hell. Close quote. William Blake, who was a religious, political and artistic rebel throughout his life, claimed that he could translate and interpret visions granted to him by God as designs, which interfused picture and written word. Blake's work is in many ways both eclectic and syncretic. It is pervaded with symbolism, imagery and prophetic utterances from Bible and epic narratives of Dante and Milton. Despite his disenchantment with Swedenborg's all-embracing the Church of the New Jerusalem and his parodies of pompous declamatory style of Swedenborg's writing, Blake remained fascinated with the celebration of contraries and the opposed ways of feeling, seeing, believing, which he had originally evolved as a corrective to Swedenborgianism. In his complex personal redefinition of Swedenborg's cosmology, Blake approached more closely the obscure mysticism of the 17th century German theosophist Jacob Bohm, who had argued that God was indefinable matter of the universe, neither good nor evil. But he had two wills, one good, one evil, one loving, one wrathful. Evil as integral to the nature of God was necessary. Human could conquer it in the earth, but they will ultimately have to assume the empty places of fallen angels in heaven by faith in Christ. In his prophetic books, Blake sees heaven as forming a part of framework which must merge with the creative energy of hell rather than stand in opposition to it. The doors of perception within quote are cleansed by an apocalyptic transformation of categories which met in newly energetic formations. Thus the tiger and the horse, lion and the lamb, the children and the adult, the innocent and the experience of Blake's symbolism ought to be perceived as an integral element in the dynamic of synthesis which he saw as implicit in creation. The complex mythology and the heretical perversity of much of Blake's thought in the Songs of Innocence and the Songs of Experience often counter an easy appreciation. The song of both books are interrelated, not simply as reflecting opposition but as a series of shifting perception. The two contrary states of human soul indicated in the work's subtitle form a kind of dialectic, to use the Hegelian term, which suggests not only uh, falling from Edenic innocence to experience, but also the possibility of progress towards a Christ-inspired higher innocence and a future to regain a paradise. 
The poem Tiger, in spite of its human-like simplicity and nurse-like rhyme, the rhythmic pattern assumes ramification from its context and from its intral relationship with the poem The Lamb in the Songs of Innocence. The organization of the tiger is that of a series of 14 increasingly rhetorical questions in which the questionnaire who speaks the poem becomes more and more sure of the answer and concurrently further and further away from the answer. The questionnaire is, of course, not Blake is merely the bard of experience and is trapped by the limitations of experience. But the purpose of this poem is to liberate us from such limitations. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. The rhetorical web spun about himself by the questionnaire results in his moving within the poem in a state of sublime awe and wonder and a mystery he has imposed upon himself. So, if we take it in a mathematical term, the circle represents the universe, the diameter, the radius in each direction would be the from center to left would be good angel, from center to right would be the evil angel and total is the diameter of angel and Blake stands in tangent with it forming a right angle to that of the diagonal radius that you can draw in it and in terms of uh, innocence and experience I would like to consider a very simple uh, analogy by telling that uh, both represents the two radius in the simple Blake's universe of circle. The rhetorical, the rhetorical web spun about himself by the questionnaire results in his moving within the poem to a state of sublime awe and wonder and a mystery he has imposed upon himself. The speaker of the tiger sees the beast as a fearful symmetry formed by the darkness. So this symmetry is again uh, a reminiscent of uh, uh, a right angle triangle. So uh, if you have a right angle triangle, the altitude that rises from the base will represent the aspiration of the angels. The base of the right angle triangle would explain the ability of innocence and experience and the hypotenuse which joins the altitude with the base which is the square root of the altitude and the base would represent the Blake's powerful imagination where he synchronizes these two movement the angels aspiration and the, and the depth, the base of the angel's progression through innocence and experience. The speaker of Tiger sees the beast as a fearful symmetry formed in the, by the darkness. So darkness and light is also uh, two radius of the single diameter of Tiger. The animal is burning bright in the forest of the night and its symmetry is fearful to those who chooses to see it in darkness. For the forest is not in the night but of the night and does not exist apart from it. The man who sees the fearful symmetry may also see God's wrath as fire and man identify tiger with it. Blake wants to question the questionnaire rather than to attempt an answer that already seeks merely to answer itself. In the first stanza, the speaker overlooks the double meaning of his own word frame, for his own mortal eye is framing the tiger with darkness and making it ordering a frightening one. The distant deeps of some hill or sky for some heaven are only possible workshops, for speaker excludes the work he stands in. The speaker also implies the hand or eye must, must be immortal 
for a mere man would suffer the fate of Prometheus or Icarus if he dared to frame the tiger. It begins to be clear that Blake's tiger is a precise equivalent of the Leviathan of the Blue Book of Job. The reader who comes to the tiger for the first time will have no trouble understanding what a tiger is, but he will want to know why it is spelled in this rather unusual way. In Blake's time, the spelling of the word was same as now, yet Blake's error or the change of the, word, uh, of the spelling if such it is, is perpetuated by modern editors when they reprint the poem, consensuously maintain Blake's spelling. They feel to, uh, that to make tiger, T-Y-G-E-R, into T-I-G-E-R would alter the nature of the beast and the poem that celebrates it. So it's not just the beast, T-I-G-E-R is the beast and T-Y-G-E-R uh, is obviously more interesting than T-I-G-E-R because it represents much more than the animalistic pattern. It startles our habitual expectations, jolts out settled imagination of the beast and prepares us to see it as we never saw it before, as Blake saw it. Then too, the Y is stronger letter than I in terms of vowel sound. It suggests a longer held sound and therefore supports the idea of an animal even fiercer than T-I-G-E-R. In this context, we mention the little boy of A. A. Millen stories. The little boy calls one of his anima, uh, friend as tiger, a spelling which erupts out of all possibility of creature being dangerous. Blake speaks in symbols in his spiritual crisis. In Lamb, his symbols are largely drawn from Bible and reveal in the familiar figure of the Good Shepherd, which refers to Christ, the pious shepherd and the Lamb of God, which too refers to Christ. When Blake says he calls himself a lamb, he is meek, he is mild, he became a little child. Close quote. It reminds us of Charles Wesley's hymn, Gentle Jesus, Meek and Mild, the Son of God, who took the form of a child and took birth in Bethlehem and grew up like lamb in shepherd's bosom. In Lamb, Blake describes the security and assurance of existence through symbol like gave the clothing of delight, softest clothing, woolly bright, within quotes. For warmth of clothing suggests the warmth of love and affection and the feeling of security. But in Tiger, Blake speaks of experience that destroys the childlike innocence. The poem Lamb is a pyognant contrast to that of the Tiger. Lamb and the tiger are symbols of two different states of human soul. When lamb is destroyed by experience, tiger is needed to restore the world. So this restoring will happen in the more of a Rousseauian way. You know, uh, because uh, Rousseau believed that uh, the state of nature was ideal, right? Uh, it was perfect. Uh, then uh, men uh, caused it uh, to become evil. And now uh, they had to go back to that state. So, you know, uh, this the way the methodology of destruction uh, that uh, Rousseau has uh, enforced in uh, le contrat social that is the social contract is that you know they will enter into a kind of armed rebellion so uh, this this again brings back to the french revolution that happened and uh, the tiger tiger burning bright in the forest of the night the forest of the night can represent bastille it can represent the it can represent the aristocracy, the darkness and the superstitions of uh, the settled British middle class and it suggests the only way is French Revolution. Now the uh, this French Revolution uh, actually never could happen in England as you know because England's uh, uh, economic condition and socio-political condition and the intellectual condition was not to destroy the established order which was more uh, synthetic uh, uh, rather uh, rather we see that um, this uh, ideal of destruction and thereby the creation the winds of Beula that will come the correspondent breeze as uh, M.H. Abrams will point out to you or the breeze that is also there in one of the uh, in many of the Beethoven's symphony that will come and destroy only in order to resurrect and create so the tiger is uh, also the symbol of resurrection it will get resurrected from the darkness it will rise 
and therefore the rise is uh, symbolized when uh, it says what hand dare seize the fire and on what wings dare he aspire the word what wings dare he aspire is very platonic you should remember because Plato in his Phaedrus says the soul when perfect and fully winged soars upward and orders the whole universe the wing is the corporeal element which is most akin to the divine and which by nature tends to soar aloft so what we see in this uh, uh, poem uh, is uh, the kind of revolution that is being forged through the uh, the idea of uh, tiger and uh, lamb represents a more uh, edenic innocence uh, which uh, Blake uh, uses in his idea of four zoas where uh, you have uh, uh, the state uh, which is Edenic and then state uh, which is um, innocence and experience and then uh, you have Alro the fallen state and then uh, we have the state beyond Alro so you know the four zoas the four representative and again uh, the idea of four zoas is reflects the uh, creation of Yuruzen you know the one who, who is spelling is U R I Z E N, but uh, it could be uh, meaning multiple things. It could be U Y O U rising, R I S E N risen, U risen, that is U, U will rise, and then obviously the Cartesian or the Descartes idea of reason, that U Y O U reason, R E A S O N, and uh, Blake could well be the critique of Cartesian uh, idea of je pense. Donc je suis, the French word which means cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. So uh, Blake's tiger breaks the idea of thought being the identity of human. He believes more on the action and therefore he creates theory of who will in his dream go to the cave of Urizen and will destroy you reason and then you have the loss los which represents a work ethic but the loss is again a name which is uh, uh, of a multiple significance because it could mean laws laws or laws of the world of how the social world goes on or los the loss of innocence that is signified by the fall of humanity so the poems uh, reflect a kind of uh, blake's personal agenda of uh, recreating his own uh, mythological background and uh, this uh, sharp contrasting images that is there is uh, she seen when a tiger of uh, tiger is Blake's uh, as we see in that the tiger is Blake's symbol of regeneration and energy tiger symbolizes plenitude plenitude of life tiger bursts through the forest of night and Urizen is finally defeated by Orc. so you know uh, Rousseau's theory uh, finally overcome the Cartesian theory so uh, uh, this uh, Urizen who represents the orthodox uh, theology and the rational deism of 18th century will be ultimately taken apart from uh, by the you know uh, the, by the evolution theory by the movement towards a uh, more uh, energy you know concentrated energy because you know blake's uh, tiger changes uh, the state from uh, that of the light energy because it's it's the light energy because Blake is very much fascinated with Lucifer the light giver like the beer you know uh, uh, the orange the shoe the fallen angel you know the first fallen angel no, orange the shoe uh, so uh, he's very much influenced by the idea that Lucifer is the light bearer and here the light bearer will move from the light energy to the heat energy and that heat will burn down tiger tiger burning bright it will burn down the entire orthodox deism and the rationalism of 18th century thank you